So Google has got this really cool product called Project IDX, and it's a way to develop apps in the cloud through a browser-based workspace. You can develop any kind of application you want, and you can collaborate with others and get AI assistance in your coding as well. And Prisma has got a template for IDX, which allows you to bring in Prisma Postgres as your database very easily. And we're going to take a look at how to get that set up today. So over at idx.google.com, if you are logged in, you can start to browse templates. So see all templates. Let's search for Prisma. We have got Prisma here. Let's click on that. Then give the workspace a name. I'll choose what was suggested there, my Prisma app. For the database, we get to choose between Prisma Postgres and SQLite, and we'll stick with Prisma Postgres. So once the workspace boots up, we can see what's here. And what we've got is a Prisma directory. We've got our schema.prisma file. So everything is started for Prisma here. And we've got this readme with instructions on how to hook up to a Prisma Postgres database. We're gonna follow through those today so that we can see how to connect to a database all within this workspace here. So first step is to head over to the Prisma data platform and we've got that loaded over here. Let's create a new project. I'm gonna name mine here just IDX like that. We'll choose Prisma Postgres. Pick a region, I'll stick with US East. So the database is provisioning now and that will move into connected in just a few seconds. Now we're connected and we can go and grab this database URL. We'll need that over in our IDX workspace. So let's just copy this, then back over to IDX. If we go into the .idx directory here and then dev.nix, we've got some environment variables already set up for us. So database URL is one of them. Let's put the database URL that we copied over into this spot. So we'll paste that in and let's not forget the semicolon at the end there. So our database URL is set to go. We've got a way to connect to our database, but let's actually grab a Pulse API key as well. So back over in the Prisma data platform, we'll head over to Pulse here, and let's click to enable Pulse for this database. Once we do, we can generate an API key. So let's click to generate one. Then we can copy it. So what Pulse gives us is real time against our Prisma Postgres database. We can stream events, we can react to changes in our database and ultimately give a real time experience in our applications. So back over at IDX, let's use this. We'll put that in place of what's there. And now those are set to go. Once they are in place, we can go and rebuild the environment. Okay, we're now ready to operate against our new database. And what we can do to start with is to run our first migration. So really this looks just like how we'd expect if we are working on an application locally. We can run npx prisma migrate dev, give it a name that can be init. All right, the migration completed. What was even in our migration anyway? We can look in the schema.prisma file that came with this template. We get a user table and we get a post table as well. Now, the other thing that comes with this template, if we go into package.json, is we've got these scripts. We've got queries, we've got caching in real time to demonstrate some of the capabilities of Prisma Postgres. Let's start by running queries. And to do that, we'll run the npm script. npm run queries. So doing so, went into the src directory and looked into this queries.ts file and basically ran all of this, which is some seed data for us. And we can actually see what's in the database here if we go back over to our Prisma data platform and go over to Studio. So in Studio, we have got some users, we've got some posts, and now we're ready to try out some other Prisma Postgres features. So let's go back over to IDX and check out another script that we've got, which is caching. And if we run this, we should be able to see some of the performance gains that we're going to get if we start to do caching against our Prisma Postgres database. All right, so let's run it. npm run caching. So what we've done here is we've run a find mini query where we're using a cache strategy. We're saying SWR, which is stale, well, revalidate should be 30 seconds. What that means is after a query runs, it's going to go in the background and get new data for a period of 30 seconds. And then TTL of 60 seconds, time to live, that is how long the cache data is good for. So let's see if we can get any different numbers here. We initially got 658 milliseconds. Let's run caching again. So 365 that time. Running it again gives 211, and we should be able to see some output here about our cached queries if we go to accelerate. 
So a total of 26 queries here served by Accelerate and three cache configured queries. And what we can see if we take a look at the performance here, the latency distribution, the cache is serving things up in an average of 15 milliseconds versus 315 from the origin. Of course, we were seeing higher numbers over here in our terminal, and that's because there's latency between where this application is running and the database itself. But to go and hit the database itself, it's actually a matter of double digit milliseconds. So that's very good performance out of Prisma Postgres if we set up our caching effectively. The last one that we'll run here is real time, npm run real time. And the message that we see here is waiting for an event on the user table. Let's try to trigger an event so that we can get some logging output. So back over in studio, let's go to user, then let's add a new record. We can do john at doe.com for the email. The name is John Doe. Let's save that. Back over here in IDX, we have received that event. So from here, we can respond to this event however we want. We might want to propagate this create event up to a UI, for example, or we might want to do something else completely with it. The point though is that we get real-time events just by data hitting our database. We can listen for those and then respond how we want to. So if you're using Project IDX by Google, be sure to go and check out the Prisma template. It's a very easy way to get started with Prisma Postgres in IDX. You can follow the steps here in the readme. If you have any questions on it, feel free to drop them in the comments below, or you can reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web or at Prisma on Twitter. Thanks for watching.